Welcome Saturday morning in Louisville, Kentucky. The brand new KFC Yum Center is where Louisville's basketball past has met its future. And today it hosts a Marquette team looking for its second win this week over a top 25 opponent. Monday, the Golden Eagles bury Notre Dame under an avalanche of three-pointers. Can Rick Pitino and his number 17 Cardinals defend their home turf in an important Big East showdown? Welcome to Conference Tip-Off 2011 on ESPN2, and we start a busy day of hoops on ESPN and our family of networks. Two teams battling to keep pace among the leaders in the Big East. Now Marquette is 3-1 and one in conference play. Their only loss coming to Pittsburgh. Solid wins over Notre Dame and West Virginia. Louisville just suffered its first loss on Wednesday at Villanova. Now they get another test on their new home court. And a spectacular new home court it is, the KFC Yum Center. I'm Dave O'Brien. Great to be joined by Bill Raftery and Raff inside the building at 11 a.m. tip. So very early for both teams, certainly a little early for you. But <laughs> both of these offenses, high octane, so a great way to rev up the day. Well, the speed reminds me of you in your heyday. Both <laughs> yeah. of them get up and down. They'll shoot quickly in the early. It means the big is going to have to dictate the outcome of this one. Dwight Bikes coming off a terrific game against Notre Dame as we check in on Star Watch for the Marquette Star. He had 21. Well, he loves to fill it up off the bounce. He can make a three on kickouts. He can make a three in the early offense. He can drill the three. He can't fall in love with it against Louisville. May have to put it on the deck and get some kickouts for the open look. The lineup now for Marquette. The men really sizzling for them is Darius Johnson Odom, averaging 21 a game in Big East games. Jimmy Butler is their most complete player, and Jake Crowder, their best three-point man percentage-wise. Now, Rap, Louisville's top scorer is senior Preston Oh, well, the green light. Anytime he has an opportunity, he's going to get those puppies squared up, drill the deep one, knock it down. They'll look for him in the early offense and on kickouts. Loves to use the rubs. Their lineup now, the bigs are Van Trees. He's 6'9", and Gorgie Jang. He is 6'10", but the rocket is Peyton Seba, the point guard who drives this race car offense for Rick Pitino. It's a good thing we have a very fit officiating crew, John Cal, Pat Driscoll, and Brian <laughs> O'Connell, because they're going to have to get up and down the floor, Bill. A little respirator, a little oxygen. <laughs> Inhale, exhale. Well, they're good ones, though. Rick Pitino has sought to speed up their pace this year, very accelerated style, and in practice, he's been using a 24-second clock, and any time they didn't get it, Beyond mid-court inside three seconds, it was a turnover. Very quickly, the youngster Siva misfires at the top of the key. No turnover there. Quick check. <laughs> Get used to that today. So Marquette coming in at 12 and 5, 3 and 1 of the Big East. Otule down on the box, holds off great. Jay Phyllis was pointing that out in our last game with them. It was a terrific job begging. Here's Jimmy Butler comes in averaging 15 a contest. He had 15 against Notre Dame. Crowder straight on no. And Van Trees with a tough rebound. He usually makes that first three, doesn't he? Getting 45% from three-point territory. Well, this youngster, really fun to watch. Sibu just gave up the ball here. Knowles tried to swing the pass, and it's tipped out of play by Johnson Odom. Yeah, you notice the activity off the ball. Very quick pin downs using the post rubs. Rick Pitino, the quick hitters alongside him, Ralph Willard. Did a great job up at Holy Cross. Of course, his son Kevin at Seton Hall. For less than a minute in, Otule has stepped out of the game. Trey Blue came in, Van Trees off the inbounds, can't connect. Woo! Gotta convert that. And a whistle, 19.06 to go here in the first half. Van Trees with the foul. Patino in his 10th year here at Louisville. Won over 72% of his games. The only coach to take three different teams to the Final Four, and he's been nominated for the 2011 Naismith Hall of Fame class. Mm -hmm. Quite an honor. Chris, normally I'm here for that white hat that they have. He wears that beautiful white suit. Beautiful white oh. suit, yeah. You're the only one who's described it that way. <laughs> he's had some issues with it. <laughs> some of them are see-throughs. Bikes up top. That's what he's going to have to do. Nice spin for two. Now, we mentioned his ability deep, and this team knows they scout, they prepare Louisville. Put it on the deck and loosen him up. He can also jump outside and nail the three. Chris Smith, the 6'2 junior, from a walk-on off to Knowles. Well, he gets rid of it quickly. Bernard King-like. Halfway around, delivers. 
Johnson Odom, his first effort from the corner, and he's been running hot and cold this season. Right now, he's the hottest shooter. See a nice bounce. Jang. Or a little baby hook would have been perfect. Don't you think in the lane? So to settle, but the bigs run to the rim. And Seba with the reaction on the delivery. A scary moment with Jang, the freshman from Senegal practice yesterday, came down on his right ankle and crumbled to the floor. Everybody took a they went for watch films after that, right? <laughs> Immediately. Rada no, and Jang there with the rebound. Well, do you expect, Bill, for the shooting percentages? Nice catch here by Van Trees to be low in an 11 a.m. tip. Nice driving move there by Preston Knowles for his first bucket. Well, Buzz had his guys here at 5.45 this morning. Uh, some people were just getting in, I might add. <laughs> Johnson Odom lost the handle on it. Yeah, Buzz likes those early morning workouts. We were just getting our cameras into position when they were packing up and leaving after practice, but he likes those quarter to six practices thoroughly organized and meticulous in his approach to everything we walked in to say hello folks and he looked at Dave O'Brien's tie the knot was a little askew when he straightened it out <laughs> you don't need a mirror when you're around him Seba with the foul and Johnson Oda makes the first buzz in his third year he's taken Marquette to the NCAA tournament each of his first two seasons on the job of course he inherited a pretty talented group from Tom Crean mm -hmm. he's done a marvelous job though a lot of these new people are adjusting beautifully to him. Great enthusiasm on the sideline. Likes clean hands, by the way. Bill Purell. I did not know. Oh, you pick these things up. Chang got the loose ball and banked it in. Big upside to that fella. Long arms. Right now, rebound and block shots, but he's a comer. And leading the Big East in block shots. Bikes are round and out. And Jang tipped it, but it's actually off of Marquette. Well, he's going to make some Jang Jang, as in Mula, I think, at some point. A uh, little grab here on Seba's penetration, and that is just terrific. He is learning how to play. Little kiss, but a big fella. You know, watching him work in practice yesterday, he got both his left and right hand on so many shots. Mm -hmm. He blocks them both lefty and righty. Seba going to the left hand, no. Ooh, everything but the finish. A lot of lingerie on the deck. Kadugan here, Junior Kadugan, a 6 1 sophomore from Toronto. A lot of ball screens, even against the zone. A lot of flashes, rotation, drive the gaps like this. Seba reaching in and commits a foul. John Cal had a foul there, a 4-4 tie. How about the speed of Siva watching yesterday's practice? His ability to get up the floor and into cracks. Extraordinary, very athletic as well. Now Patino calls him the key to the team, the former McDonald's All-American, running their high-tempo offense. I think it's Seattle, right? Jason Terry comes to mind. Brandon Roy, of course, injured right now. Chris Wes Matthews is on the Trailblazer team. Had a big one last night. Now with 26. Yeah. Crowder leaning with a right hand. Nicely done. Power move. Tough match, this guy, because he can post. He's got some strength. Mentioned his ability deep and also the bounce. Well, Louisville trying to wake up the crowd here. They hold about 22,000 in this terrific new arena. A foul with 16.15 to go. Vander Blue with the personal for Marquette. We walked around it yesterday, Bill, and it is an absolute jewel. It's an NBA arena. Well, each little dugout as you go down the steps has a cocktail lounge. Interesting. Yes. Not at 11 in the morning, interesting, <laughs> but oh. uh, they have clubs and, of course, the boxes up top. Nice cut and delivery. Wow. Woo! And Jay with the flush on the other end. The big fella Lumen, but all with the bounce. Yes, this place has a lot of great features to it. A reach in foul here with 15.59 to go in the first half. And we have a timeout. Van Trees on the deck, and he commits the foul. Number two on him. We're tied at six in the early moments here in Louisville. Such great deep history for Louisville on display here at the new KFC Young Center. Tied up 6-6 with Marquette. They'll take us inside the play. Well, the higher level of play, kids read the D beautifully. You can see right out here the understanding of what the defense is doing. Set your guy up a little step and go. Great read by Seba. And now the big fellow becomes available. 
have the hands prepared. You never know when it's going to arrive. And how about right in the pocket, too? Didn't have to bend, didn't have to move left or right. And then shang shang at the 10. Jay was 7 5 wingspan. And Patino believes that. Boogie Chang in a year is going to be a huge impact player in the Big East. I would agree. Uh, just the work habits he's going to develop under that guy. Loves the game. Basketball without borders. Amazing. The talent in Africa, too. I have been over there. Our son worked there for about four and a half years. It's some extraordinary kids getting an opportunity. Crowder off the inbounds. Little baby hook in close. No. Butler with a tough rebound and draws the contact. And Jimmy Butler will go to the line. Might be Chang there. We've been talking a lot about him. And that's the one thing, generally, we haven't been playing in a playground. Usually you jump on any pump because you want, don't want to be embarrassed. And usually kids internationally, they're much more poised staying on the floor. They don't read or react or bite on the pump fake. He did pick up the foul. Butler, good foul shooter at 79%. He had 22 against Duke. He also had 22 against Gonzaga, so he can score against outstanding competition. Now, you've had an interesting conversation with Buzz about your retiring those, during those games in Kansas City. It's amazing that he actually remembered what everybody was wearing. And Jang there, as he banks in too close, their first lead. Nice little screen across. The big fella gets to the box on time with the delivery. But he knew exactly what you were wearing. Right down to the shoes, which was a little embarrassing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wear some more expensive stuff next time. Sebo on the wing gives it up. Carrick just into the game. Buries the three. And that sets up their pressure. Seba giving it up on time. Getting the guy stepping into the jumper. So much easier. Now Carrick just coming off the bench. A 7-2 run now for Louisville. And a whistle inside with 15-10 to go. That was off the ball. Keurig that homecoming queen, but the realization of when you get the bump screen, get screened, and look at the setup. Sealing and then the delivery. Great deployment. And right now, just give it up and then we'll step, knock it down. Beautiful. There's a double foul on Jang for Louisville and Otule for Marquette. So Marquette will inbound from the sideline. And Jang in some early trouble, though playing very well, but he picks up quick fouls. And uh, Jennings brings a big wingspan, rebound, shot block, and run the floor. Johnson Odom swishes into three. He's hitting 36%, but Bill, early on, he struggled. Now he's caught fire. Well, well I think in Kansas City, he struggled. I think if yes. I'm not mistaken, but boy, he is really stroking it beautifully. He's hitting 46% from three since league play began. Louisville by one. Chris Smith, the walk-on from Manhattan and a former transfer who has now earned a scholarship. Jurek again left open, and that's what happens. The homecoming king. And why not? This is his throne. They're finding the open guy right now. He was, in fact, named the homecoming king at halftime of their football game against Memphis back in October. The press works. Got a post, and you got a find. And Keurig has scored six points in 57 seconds. Let's see if they look for him again. Now, this is one of the teams in the country that really relies a lot on getting offense for defense. Smith, that's the hot spot, but he misfires. Big upside in Smith's game. He's going to be a talent. Nice denial. Ooh. Jennings will get hit with a foul, however. And already one and one time as Jennings picks up the personal. 6'9 junior from Sacramento. It doesn't matter what time of day you start a ball game. There's still referees in the audience, right? Plenty. <laughs> Too many fouls for these fans. Johnson Odom hitting 73% from the foul line. Well, some of us are ready to go. Mm -hmm. So, Tule. This has really helped the downtown, I was told, too businesses and people flocking there was some thoughts early of doing it out by freedom hall and it, it's wonderful what they've done downtown well they feel like they'll draw more and more businesses and that's already happening to the area right around the arena but as you mentioned right smack in the middle of downtown louisville yeah, we did what we could to help the economy last we night sure did louisville on top 14 12. That's when you're in great shape. Go in, defense turns, collapses, you can get the three. Good ball movement. Jurek left open again. 
Now the crowd rising up every time he's left open for a second like that. That's yeah, amazing. Kirk's quite an athlete. A good rebounder offensively. Now the crowd admiring the defense here by the Louisville Cardinals. This is not your father's 2-3. They attack. Kadugan short rims it. And Louisville wants to get it and go. You can see Seba in the attack directing traffic. Louisville, their last four field goals have all been threes. Yeah, Buzz wanted to guard in the first 10 seconds. He felt that was key against Louisville. They really can match early. Nice duck in and pass. Otule denied. Being close, could not connect. Boy, what a reaction on the D. Jurek was there, and here's Seba. The scoop, no, and a foul on the play. And on the other end, it was Kyle Jurek, who's really given him a lift offensively and defensively. Later today at ESPN, catch two more college basketball games at ESPN at 2 Eastern. It's number one Duke coasting Virginia at 8 Eastern. Catch a women's SEC battle. It's Vanderbilt taking on number six, Tennessee. Both games available online at ESPN3.com. Around and out by Seba. A little bounce back game for Duke. You're not used to that. Mm. Tough to get there. Poor Tony Bennett gets them angry. That's not good. We'll see where Duke slides in the pole when the new one comes out next week after the first loss of the season. And Seba makes one of two. And Russ Smith is going to come on now for the Cardinals. He's a six foot freshman from New York. And he will run the point. Archbishop Malloy. Kenny Anderson. Now the pressure by Louisville. There's legendary coach Jack Curran. Been there forever. God bless him. Butler is the open man on the drive. Contact. It spins out. He'll be shooting two. He used his body really well to draw that foul. That, that's the experience. You're right. Search out that body. You must attack this pressure or it becomes relentless now. You go at the numbers, hang a little bit, chance for three. Jennings got him. Rick Fatino now in his 25th overall season as a head basketball coach. You were telling me the story yesterday when Bayheim uh, recruited him as an assistant. What was it on the honeymoon, right? He was on his honeymoon, and, and basically Bayheim wanted an answer immediately. <laughs> you know, he's not prone to waiting. He's so demanding, <laughs> anyhow. Uh, and he wound up coming, launching a terrific career. As you said, he was in Hawaii as well. Yeah, at one time, he was an assistant in Hawaii, and I believe he took over for a number of games. Uh, they had some incident there where the head coach was... Uh, Made unavailable. Louisville by two. Well, Louisville committing a lot of fouls already. Eight fouls for the Cardinals. Smith, good looking athlete. They get Henderson into the ball game. Now both these things out of bounds. Wow. Henderson's been working hard. They felt he deserved some minutes. But both clubs reverse the ball. They use the whole floor, make your defense, make the opponent's defense really react. Louisville with their first turnover here in the first half. Got to get some touches or manufacture some post-ups inside. Can't stay on the perimeter against this zone. Look how active they are out top. Shot clock at 11. Usually that doesn't come into consideration with these two teams. Johnson Odom in the paint. And Good spears the rebound. A good rebound. George Good, 6'8 senior. One is tipped out of play by Marquette off the hand of Vander Blue. Up next, as we celebrate the 25th anniversary of Martin Luther King Day, we'll tell you about a Louisville legend who has displayed exceptional content of character. As we celebrate the 25th anniversary of Martin Luther King Day, let's remember the accomplishments of a Louisville legend. Wade Houston, one of the first African-American players to suit up for the Cardinals. After graduating in 66, he later became a successful high school coach and assistant to Denny Crum. In 1989, he became the first African-American basketball coach in the SEC when he was hired at Tennessee. That's the honor to do some of his games, son Allen. 
great guy, very accomplished businessman as well. A legend here. Well, they've had some. They have had quite a few, and not in this building, of course. This is the first year in existence for the KFC Yum Center, but at Old Freedom Hall, which was rocking and rolling for decade after decade. Mm -hmm. So the final fours, of course, here's the heroes. Tremendous basketball tradition. And now Louisville, number 17 in the country, coming into today against Marquette. I hate to say I can remember some of those teams in those years ago. I remember Sally some of them Ty very, very well. Sally Tyree, Phil Rollins here in the audience, great player in the early 50s. Denny Crum had a lot of great teams here in this town. The back screen, they use bumps very well and cut well, fade. They pass and cut. Here's Knowles. He's been quiet so far in the first half. Their top scored about 16 a game. It's not quite himself. It's what you were saying earlier. His back's been bothering him just a tad. It was you recall yesterday he was unavailable. They have had injury problems. They've lost a couple of key rebounders. We mentioned Jane came down wrong on an ankle. We have Mike Maris out today. Maris out as well. Guy who can really nail the three. Crowder and heavy traffic rejected again by Couric. How about him? He said two blocks coming off the bench. See, with the left hand, no. And it's going the other way. Well, they got a foul on that play, too. But you're right about Keurig. There's so many things he does. His activity doesn't give up on the play. Gets help from good. And how about that elevation? So knocked down those jumpers, contributed on the D. And good committed the foul. So he marched the other way. A lot of time left in the half. And Marquette shooting one and ones. So Louisville with a two-point lead. Nassib has got to that rim a couple of times. He just has to make that's the next step converting in there A little shoulder shot little kiss release. He did it against Western Kentucky as bikes makes the first he had 29 in that mm -hmm. game So there have been flashes of it, but he's still learning it Oh, absolutely. And you know the size is another element and the strength of the opponent too. You get a little bang You run a cut you see the, the, the strength and conditioning coaches use that pad and whack guys mm -hmm. in, in practice that's what that's all about. I think we all needed that about 11 this morning. Here's Smith. <laughs> Not on the head. Oh, he follows his own miss. Rebound tipped up. No good again. Now rejected in a foul. Great effort, though. Buzz not happy with his guys inside. Well, too late with his second foul. So look at the reaction. <laughs> yum, yum. A relentless George Good, senior out of Raytown, Missouri. Only getting about eight minutes a game, but with an effort like that, he may well play more. Well, once you're on the bench for Rick Pitino, you better lace him up. You never know when you're going to be called on. That's why the, he normally outscores the opponent with the bench. Guys are always prepared. Now they're 14th in the nation at 82 points a game. So the offense has been clicking for Patino. Got to look up. Well, they're trying to get it across. Does on the dribble. Now he's doubled up. Nice job stepping through. Got five? Uh, almost. Kick out here for Johnson Odom. Shots not falling for the Marquette team, and they have been stagnant on 14 for a while. Smith on the drive. He gets hit and will go to the line. And that's a good call. Once again, Siva. Giving it up early. A great attention to detail. Not wasting the bounce. Filling the lane. Giving the guy an opportunity. The extra pass from Knowles in there. Great attack at a rim. Knowing you're going to get hit. Try and convert and get the two. Vander Blue fouled him. Over the last six games, he is Louisville's hottest shooter. Hitting 54% from three. 60% overall. Pretty good bloodlines, wouldn't you say? Yes. They had a player at Monmouth College, J.R. out of Denver. You know, he was in here in August, J.R. Smith, and asked Rick Pitino to work him out and attributed his terrific start to the workouts that uh, Rick provided for him. Brother J.R., as you mentioned, plays for the Denver Nuggets. Look at his denial. And Marquette having problems with their offense. They've gone five minutes since their last field goal. Now they got to attack. 
the leader. Tough shot in traffic there by Kadugan. Yeah, don't be hanging in the backcourt. Push it, find somebody, post an attack. A tough point guard anyway. Torres Achilles came back from that in just a, about five months. Great spin by Siba, but he gets bottled up. And now Marquette wants to run. Johnson on him, dumps it off. Kadugan draws the foul. Should have given it up earlier, I thought, didn't you? Yes. He may have gotten it back if he gave it up to Kadugan. Anderson with a personal, 9.35 left in the half. And double bonus for Marquette. Kadugan only a 43% foul shooter. Great shot from up above, huh? They provide a few dollars, I think, yes. for boxes, don't you think? Just a bit. I know you've got one at Fenway, amongst other places. Well, I like comfort. You know that. Mm -hmm. and, now, this is a very, very pretty building from the outside. Lots of glass, a great massive hallway, a tremendous lobby as you come in. And inside has everything you could possibly desire. And a great influence on this building was Jim Host, who's a legend in this state. Kenny, uh, Kenny Klein was telling me that uh, he looked into every detail to make sure it was the best that they could provide the university. Marquette by one. Knowles around the back into the nice. paint. Van Tree short jumper. How about that? What a big guy that can make that 10 footer. Think of Antonio Pena from Villanova. He makes that baby. That is a key shot because you're going to get it because the big is over to help assist on the drive. Van Tree's at 6'9 from Indianapolis. And Louisville back on top by one. Well, he played well in South Florida. Double double night. Nice help. Gardner has it stolen away by Siva with a quick hands. And now it's hit back by Butler. Should have bounced it. Gardner. Oh, well, the crowd wanted a traveling Ooh. violation. And it's going to be Marquette Ball right Ooh. off the head. Knowles a little bit dizzy. Wow. That was the hit. He was the one that got hit, I think, in the head, did he? I think Preston saves it. Now, watch this. He did, yes. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Well, they always say heads up <laughs> for varying reasons. Well, they're off the inbounds and a traveling violation. And now Buzz is mad because Van Trees actually initiated a walk and they let that go. Look at Buzz. <laughs> I don't blame him. I absolutely don't blame him. Screaming for a foul that, as you say, initiated the traveling violation. You know, here's a case where I wouldn't mind a late call. Do, do you know what? <laughs> uh, he can dance. We're going to want Dancing with the Stars. And a, a good official, and Pat is, he knows maybe he should have called that one. He was hoping he wouldn't walk. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? He didn't want that nickel dimer away from the basket. Right. Uh, it's like being married. You're never right. <laughs> but still working. And we have a timeout with 8.28 to go. Well, he remembers what the refs wear. And one knocked out of bounds. So no timeout here with 8.28 left in the half. And Louisville up by one. You know, those good officials don't make him pay for that tirade. Right. You know, they'd be like, hey, this one, we, maybe we slip. That ball screen versus zone and man. A lot of high low on occasion. And it tipped out to midcourt. Bikes at the foul line. Here's Kadugan shot clock at eight. Automatic switching. A little puzzling right now. Got to attack. Shot clock at three. And it'll go the other way. Foul is 7.55 left in the half. It'll be on Otule. Well, this business might drive you to consumption. <laughs> well, you've got choices without question here at the KFC Yum Center where it's 1918 Louisville. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> well, we have been raving about the KFC Yum Center. This is year one of the brand new Louisville home, which has all the creature comforts you could possibly ask for and great seating as well, 22,000. The capacity Monday of Martin Luther King Day 
ESPN delivers four games, some of the best in the nation at 3.30. Number seven, Villanova taking on number nine, Connecticut at 5.30. It's Kansas State squaring off against Missouri. 7.30, number four, SU battling number five, Pitt. In the day's finale, number three, Kansas squaring off against the Baylor Bears. Yeah, but Villanova playing very well. Uh, bigs are starting to provide a lift. And of course, Kemba Walker out of the gate in Maui. And as it looked back, the Q's Pittsburgh gigantic game, I think, don't you? I do. That's at 7.30 on ESPN. As the Gibbs and Brad Wanamaker will be tested a little bit outside with that extended zone of Jimmy B. The Louisville coming off of a 14-point loss at Villanova on Wednesday. So got a taste of how good Villanova is. Well, good reaction defensively there on that guard around when he hit the high post. Good with a turnaround short. So Martin with the opportunity to grab the lead seven and a half minutes to go before the break. Well, the zone's been effective keeping Marquette on the perimeter. When they've gotten into the gap or with the pass, they've gotten their way. Kudugan likes to attack. A lean in. No. And Trees had a rebound stripped away from him. Forgot the ball though. Squeeze it. Likes nearly let it fly. He can certainly do that. He's hitting 44% beyond the arc. Nice cut by Pulse. Here he is. All net. Good call. But did he have some night against ND? Pure. We're five for five deep. I don't know where he is. Really stepped up the last two games, averaging 19 for a contest. Boy, Kirk's made a big difference. Great give there for the easy bucket. Did he give it or fumble it? <laughs> I'm not sure, uh, but again, the, like the result, the nice patient double pump by good and plenty. Yeah, sloppy pass and out of play back over to Louisville back to Keurig. Let's see what he did with it. Let's take a little look, but good understands how to face the basketball. Nice use of the bump. No, I think he <laughs> lost it. You're right. <laughs> He'll get an assist, though. Which had four turnovers in their last five possessions. Here's Knowles off to Siva. Approaching six minutes left in the half. Uh, Trying to get around Folson. He commits the foul. You know, it's interesting. Siva went at the leg of the showman, the hedge man. And that's what you have to do on any of those ball screens. If the defense steps out, go at the leg. That's going to give you the call. One and one time here for Seba. And a pretty good foul shooter at 73%. As a team, Louisville at 67%. We talked about the Louisville defense, and they lead the Big East with 10 steals a game, eighth nationally in block shots, only allowing 39% shooting. So, as much as their offense has been a focus this year, defensively is how they've been winning games. Mm -hmm. Sort of the mantra, nice hustle. That's what they do. Who went hurt too? It was a great effort. That Knowles, I mean, didn't give up on it. And then that's that back, I think. Look at this effort. And he just comes down in a strange way. Oh, the poor. And he is really in agony. Oh. He has to come out kind of maybe grabbing in a hamstring there. But you know, you talked about his back and. How that was really bothering him coming into today, limiting his practice a bit. And you're right, it's more the leg on that trip, wasn't it? Likes to drive. High off the window and no. See a real jet. But a wild pass. They like that alley oop in transition. Yeah, they sure do. That, that effective that trip. It seems it was some talent, speed, unbelievable dunk against Drexel early in the year. He made a great point. If he learns how to finish, he's going to be a terror in this league. And a whistle foul here with 5.28 left. That'll be good down there. The bigs are heading up. That'll be Jimmy's his third foul. Louisville by one. And a two-shot foul, 5.28 to go. A free timeout at the other end by Buzz. He's got his whole gang down there. Well, Marquette gets to Paul next, but life in the Big East seldom gives you a break. 
They will then face Connecticut, Syracuse, and Villanova in succession. New meaning to not looking ahead. Yeah. I mean, it's not spring break. You're not going to Daytona or Fort Lauderdale, for that matter. And dating back to January 8th, Marquette will face seven nationally ranked opponents in eight games, including today against Louisville, the number 17 team. Murderers Row. So no let up at all in the Big East. Nothing new there. Tied at 22. That's the sixth time we've been tied. Whistle before the basket, so no, no hoop there. It was on the floor. So Zhang did a nice job sealing his guy, too, to permit uh, that shot at the end, even though it was disallowed. Very alert. He is learning how to hold his man off. Kadugan fouled him. I like his wheels. They're reminiscent of my own. <laughs> See for the 5'11 sophomore from Seattle. And wreaking some havoc as he attacks Marquette here in front of the big crowd at the KFC Yum Center. You know, I think the hardest thing to get guards to do is give it up short in the floor. I think that's one of the best attributes Siva has. Let's everybody else do the damage at the other end before the defense gets organized. He'll step off for a moment and Smith comes back on for him. Steve Bezziello over there tutoring. He's got some lungs, doesn't he? Oh, practice. Great energy. He and Rick Patino both. Good at oh. Thought he should have given it up. He should have. Yes, a turnover. Both wide open. So he can make that shot, too. Well, Good. how about Jen coming out of the pack with the dribble? Oh. <laughs> and a foul here with 458 left. That'll be on Johnson Odom. Rick, you got to let him bring it up more, this guy. <laughs> what talent. Well, you pass up, bad things happen. You got an opportunity to give it up, give it up. And why not? He did the right thing, but pick it up quickly. No drop kicks. 6'10. Freshman from Senegal. Battle for the rebound. Marquette wins it. Well, you quick in that lane. Talked about his ability in the offensive class. He's really played very well for Patino in the first half. They do a nice job of using a ball screen and dragging. Little timer. No basket there. Again, the foul on the floor. 442 left in the half. And Preston Knowles will pick up his first. So Kadugan to the stripe here. Sophomore from Toronto. Tough thing against uh, Rick Pitino's defense. It's not pure zone. It's a combo where they play some man to man principles. They'll switch on you. It's complex. So they take you, or should I run my man stuff? Should I run my zone stuff? Should I do individual clear outs? And I think you've got to try all of those things. You can't just stay with one format. Now the seventh tie that this game has seen in the first half. Bowles on the move. Gives it up for Smith. And one and done to the Cardinals on that possession. Solid check out by Marquette. If anything, this nice pass. What an entry. Oh, how about Butler oh. going to the left hand to lay it in and go to the line? That is gorgeous. Oh. Dave, how about that maneuver? They spread the D and then right down the lane. And you've got to have some ability around the bigs. Don't show it all. Don't expose yourself. A little kiss. Delivery by the Butler. Thank you very much. An incredibly busy day of college basketball. Tremendous matchups throughout on ESPN, our family of networks. Kicking it off here today with Marquette against number 17, Louisville. And that young man, Kyle Kirk, has played very, very well in the first half. Low post trouble as far as fouls. Good has committed three, and Jang has committed three for Louisville. That could be big in the second half as Butler connects on that one. And a little shot of Preston Knowles there. He is not quite himself. Key performer providing a lift on the offensive end. Some back issues. There's a nice little staggered double for him. 
Rolls high on the wing. You can tell he is eager to do something offensively here. He'll lift and connect. And Odom was really on him. I mean, that's a contested shot. Just get it up a little bit higher. Nobody Two back. There's Butler to slam it very quickly. Wow. you got to cover. And Rick a little upset. You're going to press the back guy. The safety valve's got to be alert. So Marquette by three. Chris Smith, he can knock home three-pointers. He had 18 against Villanova. The automatic switches this trip, and it worked. Holes gave it up Butler. And they've got a three-on-two. Johnson Odom into the lane. Johnson Odom will let fly a three and nail it. Boy, that just shows you, you keep yourself active, even if you give it up. Odom makes the pass, gets into a spot, becomes available, and as you noted earlier, he can drill him of late. This is a 10-2 run, and Marquette has done it inside and outside to grab the lead at Louisville. Uh, Dave, early in the half, uh, Marquette didn't do a good job attacking the pressure, but this time they get it down uh, against the press, but also the ability of shooting the open shot and becoming available. Very alert by the point guard, and he's guarding Knowles at the other end. So a six-point lead here for the Golden Eagles. Smith with the left hand, nicely done. Boy, he's got a strong upper body. He is going to be a talent to be reckoned with, getting better. They can't get over the improvement from his early arrival. Rick looking down in the gym saying, who is that kid, right? He had transferred, but he hadn't come in and talked to Rick yet. <laughs> I guess Smarto Samuels is the one to recommend. Nice cut. Tough shot. Ball scan finish. Knowles again. Too strong off the back iron. Johnson Odom nearly fouled by Jennings, almost stepped on his back heel. Quick dish, and that's going to be goaltending. Now, there's a kid that's running the show for his team. Darius Johnson Odom, DJO. We saw the jumper earlier. Now, look, he, he sees him, but he can't make that pass. Let's make a change and a little bullet there. Wow, a little heat on that one. Sandy Koufax special. Johnson Odom averaging 21 a game in Big East play. He has really stepped up his game since the conference kicked in. 34-28 Marquette. A little ISO. They worked on this yesterday. Smith can't get it to go, and it's off good off his fingertips and back over to Marquette. That's a little NBA influence, you know. Let him take his guy. Now, tomorrow night, catch an NBA Western Conference battle on ESPN. 9 o'clock, it's Denver against San Antonio. And then on Monday afternoon on ESPN at 1 Eastern, the Chicago Bulls square off against the Memphis Grizzlies. Nice trap. Near theft there by Kirik. He commits the foul. Boy, that synchronization is beautiful, though. The trap, the step up, just a little late on the ball reversal by Kirik. Butler a little bit shaken up, but he goes to the line. And will be shooting two. Now, I have energy. Oh, you do boundless. Rick takes it to another level. <laughs> he hits that treadmill nonstop. Now you watch him work in practice. He is a man in motion for all the two hours they're on the floor. He never stops. And also, when there's a play underneath it, a bang, bang, he'll say, hey, they're not going to call that the Big East. You've got to take the hit and finish the play. And he's right. Well, Marquette 15 out of 19 at the line. They're a good foul shooting team. near 70%. This is their biggest lead today. They have this big crowd on their hands. And they're forcing Louisville to run their half-court offense. Real solid. Automatic switch. And the big... Oh, I foul. Fouled by Fulce. It's a 14 to 4 run by Marquette with a minute four to go before the break. You know, these two coaches permit their guys to switch even on a bigger guy. And then the big guy takes the little guy in. You see Villanova do the same thing. They're not afraid. They expect the guy to fight around and get support and all those things. It's a very demanding set. Around and out by Siva. And 
he makes the second. And they're going to bring in Elijah Justice, 5'10 freshman out of Pikeville, Kentucky. Well, give me that nickname. Bullet. The Bullet. Faster than the Rick Dublin that. When he went to scout him, quick, hustles. Yeah, and it's stuck. The crowd very appreciative to see him with a minute to go. And the opening half. And a good half, certainly, for Marquette. They did a nice job of late, too, having two play one and finding the open guy. There's a ball screen. Ball's a long one. He can bite you with that. So 30 seconds left in the opening half. Just gets it off. Kirk will let fly and got it, a two-pointer. I thought they might hold it for late. Not Louisville. See if they run a little trap at some point. They got a timeout. Mark hit. So Buzz Williams takes one here with 17 seconds to go before halftime. And Marquette on top, 36 to 31. Entertaining, don't you think? Yeah, very much so. And of course, Marquette is trying to pick off their second consecutive top 25 opponent this week. Mm -hmm. They're ready. <clears throat> the coach, uh, that's exactly what we mentioned earlier. What fun thing too, we didn't like anything out of order. His team's certainly not out of order. No, they're playing awfully well. And we talked about the high octane nature of both of these offenses. Anything surprise you about what they've done? Uh, I think Keurig surprised me early. Mm -hmm. His contributions on the offensive end. Uh, early on, Marquette not beating the pressure. Now more accustomed to getting it over the timeline and nailing some shots right at the rim so they get a little chess moves here and there fun game Marquette by five and with the ball here with 17 seconds left as you look at those offenses one and two in the Big East but very close and really that man has been something of a non-factor the top scorer for Louisville Preston Knowles 15 points a game we have seen him aching a little bit in the first half. He has only two points. So seven seconds to go. Two seconds. Johnson on a long fall away. That's how the first half comes to an end. Marquette with a miss, but they do have the five-point lead. 36-31. They've really done it at the line. Look at the foul shooting. 15 out of 19. And not necessarily shooting at nine for 25. Buzz already working through that shirt. And another big half to come here. Right now, we toss it back to Steve Bunin and Adrian Branch in the studio for the halftime report. Gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Great way to tip off this Saturday afternoon in college basketball. This Marquette Louisville. It's all your heart desires, including a pretty good basketball game between Marquette and Louisville. Marquette leading 36 to 31. Dave O'Brien and Bill Raftery with you. We were talking, Bill, about Darius Johnson Odom, the Marquette shooting star, really heating up in league plays, doing it again. You know he can shoot. You know he can do things passing, handles the ball very well. But his ability to get free what gave, is what gave Marquette such a good half. Here, all the switching, he read it. Got to the corner here on the drive. Doesn't count the house. Steps out between defenders. A little nylon from deep. And, of course, the homecoming king now has the king at his court. Pal Keurig from the corner, getting down early, finding the space to convert. And just terrific effort. Something you expect from all Louisville kids. Under Rick Pitino. Great block. So Kirk beginning the second half on the bench, not so Johnson Odom, but you know Kirk will be on quickly at eight points in the first half. Johnson Odom with nine and a quick strike underneath. He's been very quiet, uh, Crowder. One of the few opportunities he's had. They got to get him untracked. 6'6 six, six junior with a strong body. And a good start to the second half for the Golden Eagles. Preston Siva here is going to be a key to Louisville's comeback. Should they make one, he'll let fly. He actually went down on the seat of his pants right in front of his own bench. No foul there. Johnson Odom taking on two defenders can't cash in. He attacks. He's relentless. Good pull up. Knowles, no. There's certainly something off with him with that shooting stroke. He is battling the back issue. 
Batter again, doesn't wait, draws the foul. He'll go to the line for two. Whew, what a spark he's provided. We look at our first half stat sheet. Johnson owed him nine points, also four rebounds. We talk about Marquette getting to the line. Boy, they did a ton. 15 out of 19. Yeah, very important, I think, uh, getting inside opportunities to get those free throws. They weren't fouled. It was certainly the difference in the first 20 minutes. As Crowder misses on the first one. Chris Smith fouled him. It's only a 59% foul shooter. Well, one thing about Crowder is his understanding and great knowledge of the game. Just watching it. He reads things beautifully. Former junior college player of the year. But scuffling at the line. Shuffle cut, nice dive. And trees with a finish. Chris Smith with a nice give. Two big guys made good cuts. River 4 4, not Jerry West, but and trees very active. There's a long one by Bikes and off the back of the iron. Rebound controlled by Marquette. How about that tremendous move again by Butler? He's put on a show a couple of times here in this contest and has given Marquette a seven-point lead. And Dave, you know, he's the kind of a kid that's their best post-up guy, but also understands the game inside. Uh, just active on the glass. Look at that. Just picks it off the guard. Tough matchup at six foot five, and you got Knowles underneath you. And a three-point play. The other thing about Butler, he finishes those three-point mm -hmm. plays, doesn't he? He's effective. Very talented guy. He's been around. Elijah Justice here off to Van Trees. Smith looking for some help here. And Marquette has sort of diffused this crowd as well with their good defense, forcing him deeper into the shot clock. They really have. Jennings on the high post now takes it down the lane for two. The big fella. A little fast ecstasy. And he was a non-factor in their loss to Villanova. Only had two points in 22 minutes. Looking nice. to give Rick Pitino a lift on the entry pass. So Tule draws the foul on Jennings. That'll be four on Jennings. Crowder is so effective no matter where he is on the floor. That entry pass was deeper than the three-point line. And just a great read. I've seen him do this in a number of games. Look at how far out he is. And just faulty defense to get caught behind there. But Otule, one of those kids with a special talent, locks his guy, pulls on. Makes the first. He hits 54%. So 17 41 left and he makes that end as well this has been a real key for Marquette getting to the line as frequently as they have 17 38 left in this contest once again they have made more foul shots than their opponents have mm -hmm. attempted sounds dukish doesn't it yes we're always doing that you know the amazing thing with Louisville inability to score they can't rev it up they can't get the full court pressure they create havoc something they love to do First 10 seconds is what Buzz was talking about. The shot clock. Guard, guard. Let them get deeper into the shot clock. Knowles trying to make a move. He shoved. Too a little tough for him guarding that far. Number three on Chris O'Toole, the 6'11 sophomore, caught in a mismatch. So he's going to have to step out. So Louisville will check it in. Chris Smith. Marquette with a very small lineup at this point. Look at this turnover. Entries can't go and get it. Great activity. Pressure in the ball. Lining up. And Ralph Willard. Longtime pal from Long Island. Holy Cross grad. Excellent coach. Confidant for Rick as well. Puzzling though. Eight point lead here for Marquette. Pressure by Louisville. No Shapshire, no Buckles, no Mara. I mean, they don't have a lot of bodies here in Louisville. They're short. It's really hurt them on the glass, hasn't it? Absolutely. Louisville 11-0 when they out-rebound their opponents. 
but they've been beaten up several times on the boards with those losses. Butler turns into the lane. Nice find, too. Mike's trying to dump it down low for Crowder, knocked out by Louisville. A closer look at the injured guys on the bench for Rick Patino, not where he wants to have them. Well, you know you're in trouble. You got more suits and sweatsuits than you have players. Not a lot of guys to turn to. Got to gut it out. And Marquette is playing terrific basketball. Renewed confidence, I think, after that Notre Dame game. He's a good, solid, well-coached team. Airborne Johnson on a very tough shot as the shot clock went off. That one glanced off the backboard but never touched the iron. Look at the rebounding story the last several games. The last four for Louisville. Today they're minus three. Mm. That puts you in a deep hole. And again, inability to score diffuses all their pressure. Jennings blocks a clean play. Great coverage there by Marquette. Crowder with nice little post action. Good footwork, spins out. Butler and a foul, and once again he goes to the line for a three-point play. You gotta love this kid. I mean, he just provides any lift necessary for his team. Good understanding of what he has to do. No help on the dribble by, just a little bit of a wave there. You gotta close that out. Uh, Seba's gotta get over and help, but just an understanding that only experience gives you. Entries with the foul, so Jimmy Butler, the senior from Texas. This would be his third three-point play, the old-fashioned way. There's 16-14 to go in the second half. And he does know how to lock him up. An 11-point lead. Now they continue that theme. Mm -hmm. Foul shots made as opposed to opponents' foul shots even attempted. Now, this has nothing to do with the referee. It's the activity, the action, going at people. He was slapped here, got away with it. Chang drops in two, the 6'10 freshman. I would just ride him now. He'd just dump it down there. He has shown that ankle that he injured yesterday he is just fine. Crowder from the corner. Seba trying to shred that defense. And the foul with 15-37 left. Well, he does attack. A little life, maybe, huh? Here in the Yum Center. Well, they could use it. They need some adrenaline here. An early start in Louisville, and they're down 46-37 to Marquette. Join Boomer and the gang for Sunday NFL. Thanks. Steve, thank you very much. 46-37. And Marquette has taken command here, although Siba's at the line now for Louisville. That's imperative he makes them so they can put a little wrinkle, at least this one now, because you get your defense set, get organized. They're, and he's looking for the crowd right now. It is very subdued. Look, he's turned around. Well, it's tough when the kids aren't playing their best. They need a lift. Yeah. And the game tipping off at 11 a.m. here in Louisville. Nice play here once again. Chang, he has done some nice things. That ankle and all. Offensive foul on Vander Blue. His third. And he has not scored. That's a freshman who averages nine points a game for Buzz Williams. Now, this is a team that gets into spurts. They got to get one to get back in it, Louisville. The longer they have to take in the half court, plays into Marquette's philosophy. Trying to free up Jank Smith. The big fella could not handle a pass. And not a good pass anyway. Crowder can make the three or dump it down. Now he posts up. He's got the, the advantage. They just don't seize it. Mike's lost the handle on it. Just off his hand and out of play. So both teams a little sloppy here this portion of the second half. But Marquette with a serious upper hand. Shuffle and a hold on Smith as he cuts. For Dugan with the logical call. It'll be his third foul. Oh, all of 
a sudden foul trouble is beginning to play an active role in this one. A bunch of guys have now picked up three fouls. Good has three. Knowles has three. Just not a real flow right now, is there? Either way. Yes. A lot of whistles. Try to get it in. That's the first. Look at this. Turnover. Close. Yeah, Bikes wow. with the pick. And the lane drops in a pair. The kids make that, don't they? Here's a steal. What an activity by Butler. He does create the turnover, Rick. Just not typical Louisville basketball, attributable to excellent preparation by Marquette, though. And Patino needs a timeout desperately, down by 11 on their home floor, and everybody's sitting on their hands at the KFC Yum Center. It's a lot of despondent-looking Cardinals here. Can you look despondent in that getup, though? <laughs> That festive outfit. That's, that's how you went out last night. <laughs> but right now, they got to get something off their defense. Uh, Louisville, stagnant. Just not getting the emotion that you normally see, both on the floor and in the audience. Butler with a follow away. Can't drill it. Fight for the rebound and won by Marquette. Boy, Crowder really battling hard. And now Kirk goes down as he's tied up. Possession arrow will take it to the other end of the floor. But that's the frustration for Louisville. Those rebounds you must get. Standing on tippy toes, not being physical. Kurek at the end sees the opportunity. Louisville will have it, 48-37. Inside the KFC Yum Center, the brand new basketball palace of the Louisville Cardinals. Bill Raftery, Dave O'Brien with you. Great to have you along as we kick off a very, very active day of college basketball on ESPN and our family of networks. This one tipping at 11 a.m. local time. Foul shots, a big part of the story. Marquette has been making them. They've been taking a ton. Ooh, just looks more aggressive. Once again, getting deeper in the shot clock. Siva wants to penetrate, and it's deflected by Otule. A little steal here. Tries to win it back. Now it's loose, and Louisville will scoop it up. Knowles swings it here. Chang back out for Knowles, a three. How about that? Chang again and kicked it out. Wide open opportunity. Cut it to eight. Slicing in Johnson. Oh, he'll draw the foul. Boy, he didn't wait. He went right at the iron. Well, this team is a very aggressive-minded team. He's clever. Every time you see a tape, you write down strong. That's what... Darius Johnson brings to the floor. Good committing his fourth foul. And Johnson owed him to the line where he hit 73%. Overall, his shooting has really picked up, as we mentioned, during league play. Overall, he's at 36% from three, but 46% in the league. That's about what he hit last year for the entire season, 47% mm -hmm. outside the three-point line. Getting better looks, I think. I think. He's stepping into shots, it looks like. And then you develop a little more confidence. So the lead at nine for Marquette. Well, how does he read the double? This is the difficulty, I think, when you're not accustomed to being doubled. Knowles with a nice save. Bounce it, however, out of play. Tough one to catch. Particularly for the big guy. They need some ready basketball. Down and dirty, Louisville. Marquette looks poised. Very experienced on the defensive end. Otule on Jang. Steps. They can't get the roll. Kirk was the one who really provided them the spark in the first half. Siva with the pass off and no. That's when he should have shot, I thought. Yeah. Huh? Right in front of the rim, little floater. Instead, Good took it and missed. Well, they're doing a great job, Marquette, overloading. And the big sort of sealing them inside. Johnson on him catches. Too strong, but a second effort. Butler gives him that. Here's Bikes. Buries it. What a job Butler's been doing. Whew. Special delivery. And once again, rebounding, mm -hmm. hurting Louisville. Mm -hmm. The real problem. Just the long one your guard's got to get involved in. 
12 point lead biggest of the day for Marquette Knowles can't find the range good right back up for two how about the long arm there season to deal Butler wants to press the issue and slam by Jang that's a man's block the top shot blocker in the conference how about that message Check the nails in the floorboards. Well, after the break, Buzz Williams grabs the grease board and he'll break down a staple of his opponent's offense when we return to Louisville. I'm going to show you one of the quick hitters that Louisville runs predominantly anytime it becomes a half court set. Uh, it's a quick down screen. That's what they're best at. Quick down screens and out the reversal. Uh, two is now going to come out the down screen. Five is going to recenter and it's going to be back to two. Once they set the down screen, it's a back screen into a ball screen. So what it, what it ends up looking like is two is here, ball screen with any of their fours and fives. Their other post will be away in the dunker spot. The guard that wasn't involved in the back screen is spaced. As they use the ball screen, all of their fours and fives roll, and the other guard, in this case it would be five, is going to replace back out ball side. Pretty impressive. They know 15 offenses as well as their own, these coaches in the Big East, and what he's done to eliminate the help is a lot of switching on those ball screens. They don't mind having a big guard a little and vice versa, and it's been extremely effective. Straight up man, this trip it looks like. Crowder can make that deep while they're afraid to go out and play him. Seven to shoot here. Bikes just lost the handle. It spit out of his hands. It's one second to shoot. Firing off a long one here and a wild one in a shot clock violation. Well, that's where they got to get it. And Buzz knows that they can step it up a little. He's urging his guys to concentrate on the defensive end. Get this Louisville team deep into the shot clock. Ten-point lead for Marquette. Just 42 points to this point for the top-scoring team in the Big East in the Louisville Cardinals. 11-17 left. You know, Rick pointed out to, to CB yesterday that he's got to learn what to do as he approaches the basket. And he's had a lot of trouble getting a shot or making a good decision. That's something that you know, he's so talented as he or this team gets better it'll be because of that because he can really draw the D and dish it off and if he can finish it obviously uh, more to his credit good on the baseline got the short jumper yeah, very good patience there on the kick out by Jennings well not a good play here wild pass yeah. up and over Butler yeah, bikes uh, trying to force the issue One of the few times today in front of this sellout of 21,485. You're really feeling some energy. Absolutely. Well, the cocktail since 11, there should be some energy here. There's that shuffle cut ball screen. Nice cut. Knowles had to adjust the shot. Can't connect. Jennings tips it. It's stolen away from him by Crowder right under the iron. Good piece of officiating, too, recognizing that. Zone with those man-to-man -man principles. The two legs in there a long time. Crowder, tough shot, and he'll go to the line. And O'Toole created the activity. Held off strong, and Crowder inside out. Give me dynamite. Put it on the deck. The closeout without the type of control and balance, disadvantage defensively, and strength at the tip. A terrific recognition there by Crowder. You could feel the momentum beginning to swing. Mm -hmm. And to attack the rim like that, have a chance for a three-point play here. He can't do it. Well, he is a talent. JC player of the year. See the slips, gives it off Jarek Null. Approaching 10 minutes remaining here at Louisville. The mark has been very patient in the half court. They don't have the run out. O'Toole keeps people active in there. The foul on one of the bigs. Chang. It'll be Jang indeed. That's four. 
on the big guy. Number 10 for Louisville. Oh, too late to the line. Well, he really just gives a great target to the offensive perimeter people. Not a great free throw shooter. Yeah, stepping up with 53 coming in. He's had trouble with injuries in his career. Twice suffering a broken foot. Two redshirt years. Mm -hmm. But healthy this year. The 6'11 sophomore. He's strong. Yeah, look at the activity. Oh. Crowder again. Johnson Odom. Well, that would have been a dagger. He liked it coming off his hand. Now trouble again. Crowder wreaking havoc defensively. Look at the coverage. What hustle. And forcing another turnover. Kadugan, he's fouled with 9.38 to go. That is just a tremendous effort, and he knows it. How big that stop was. Everybody challenging. Oh, this is beautiful. And you work hard to get a team the trust in one another and effort to make all those covers and stops ensuing run out silent. Knowles eventually with the foul on Junior Cadugan. That was a relentless sequence mm. by Marquette, wasn't mm. it? That just doesn't come easy. That's a lot of hours in the gym. Well, Buzz Williams gets his kids up early. We mentioned that. He loves to practice at about 5.30 in the morning. He had his team on the court today at 5.45. Bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. Mm -hmm. They're all wide awake, he said. They've gotten used to it. They're all, he does it during the year. They're very alert and ready to go. So I couldn't get my uh, assistant coaches to come in that early. Much less the players. They shot at 5 o'clock in the morning on New Year's Day, Marquette. Mm -hmm. And at West Virginia game, we're up bright and early. Got to score and get your defense started with your Louisville. Here's good, long range. Maybe not the shot they wanted from him. Especially down 13 points. And a lot of one and dones lately. Oh, pretty shot by False from the corner. He bites you periodically. A couple of threes during the year when necessary, particularly in early offense. So it's a 7-0 run. This is the biggest lead today for Marquette. Knowles off the fake. He's trying to get going, but it's just not happening today for their top scorer. How about the challenge on every shot? 8.40 to go. Otule can't bank it in, harassed, but they get another effort. They're getting a lot of second chances. They sure are. All about being in the right spot and then that energy put nice cut. Johnson Odom and the whistle with 8.26 to go. And Marquette dominating play here at Louisville. And they're getting whatever they want. That might be the limit, huh? That's it on Jang. He has just fouled out. Number five. And Stephen Van Trees will have to come on for him. A lot of leaders on this Marquette team. You, know, you don't think of Crowder as one, but he does with his actions on the floor, his Certainly knowledge. Butler. Of, yeah, Butler, another one. Of course, Darius Johnson Odom, special. Kadugan can step in at the point to back up Bikes. We know what Bikes can do. Well, you look at their losses. A hard fought five point loss to number one Duke, five point loss to top 25 Wisconsin, a one point <laughs> loss at Vandy, an eight point loss at Pittsburgh. They're 12 and 5. They look like a tournament team. Oh, they are a tournament team. There's no question about it. They will be one of those. If you get them on the board, you go, oh my goodness, we're we got a little work cut out. And particularly if you're the 11 o'clock game, right? <laughs> As we're finding out here today, they don't mind it at all. 61 44. Well, they are ragging the people and reacting. Look at this. Off the screen. Jump shot, no by Justice. High rebound, Jennings. Left the short. He'll collect the foul and go to the line. That was a much better offensive rebounding trip, though. Big bodies at the rim holding off. Well, it's some schedule, but that's the Big East for you. Today, number 17, Louisville. Bit of a break with DePaul coming up, but then 
Notre Dame Connecticut Syracuse and Villanova all inside the top 11. So you want to be a coach son huh. A steady diet of power teams. Number one for Jennings. But you know the teams that are playing them are saying the same thing though. Sure. You know, the, the list of, is for every team in this league. And the Butler had started off. And the Buzz Williams wanted to keep him in the game but he's already been replaced. That's the first thing they've done wrong. <laughs> Just communicated on the sub. It's been it today. Kadugan. Nice. Williams can't finish. Although he should have. Now Louisville looking for somebody, somebody to give them something. No basket there. Foul before that shot. 7.46 to go. And how about the energy that comes out of the Marquette head coach, Buzz Williams? He loved that defensive sequence that you were raving about. Who wouldn't? 61-45. Thank you very much, and thank you for the update there. Here, Marquette on top of Louisville, 61-45 at Louisville. Just us off the inbound, no. Mm. And not a whole lot going right for the Cardinals here in their tremendous new digs here in downtown Louisville. And the more you watch Marquette, it's all been the defense, I think. They've just been solid. Every shot up in the face, challenging. And now they will be in no hurry. Shot clock at nine. Johnson on a oh. scoops it underneath. Beautiful reverse. Oh, is he strong at the rim? Goodness. Avoided the charge, used the rim. What else you need, coach? Boy, he has seven rebounds as well as the 14 mm -hmm. points. They have been crashing those boards. Really killing seal for Louisville with their personnel losses. Rolls with a bounce, and it's kicked out of play off Jennings. Kind of sums up their day. Yeah, it sure does. Not much you can say over there. And they'll take a timeout. Not enough bodies. Now, well, you know, Monday on Martin Luther King Day, ESPN is delivering four games with some of the best teams in the nation. At 3.30 Eastern, number seven, Villanova, taking on number nine, Connecticut. At 5.30, number 20, Kansas State, facing off against number 12, Missouri. At 7.30, number four, Syracuse, they're in a fight right now, taking on fifth-ranked Pitt. And the day's finale is Kansas taking on the Baylor Bears. Dave O'Brien and Bill Raftery with you, and you've got the UConn game. Hey, I'm looking forward to it. Of course, Kemba Walker, you know, early in the year, Kemba had a pace where he let the game come to him. And, and when they get some help up front and he plays with that pace, they are really a tough out. They, they, they don't have the depth we've seen Connecticut over the years, but Villanova's playing very well the last couple of games. The bigs have been integrated into the offense, don't you think? The Connecticut had a terrific win going to Texas yes, out right. of conference and knocking off the long And one. you were there? Yes. They bring it to the country, and it was a great game to watch. 63-45 Marquette. With did, the basketball. Did Jim Calhoun take credit for that shot clock heave? I'm pretty Kemba? sure he did. He's worked on that. George Holy Wayne, shit. he taught him that. He's <laughs> nice getting across midcourt to Johnson Odom. They can afford to be very patient. Neither team has shot the lights out, but Marquette has been very productive at the foul line. Well, Crowder wanted the ball, heavy nose. He's saying, wait, wait. Vantrese jumps out. The theft and the slam. Right up, baby. Little energy both on and in the stands. And this is where they're tough, I think. When the big guy gets on the ball, take away the vision. The Butler's so valuable in so many areas of the floor. Not only their best post up, but. One of his decision making is extraordinary as well. Yeah, their most complete player. Johnson Odom, no. Rebound tip. Crowder almost came up with another one. That's going to be on the line. So back over to Marquette. Well, his pursuit is extraordinary, isn't it? He has really harassed the heck out of the Cardinals here, particularly in the second half. They've given him no breathing room. Junior Cadugan back on now for Buzz Williams. <laughs> so 
Dugan had it tipped. And another whistle here away from the basketball with 544 to go. That'll be on Preston Knowles of Louisville. Hmm. I can't believe it. Put his arms around him according to Ben O'Connor. So it's Johnson Odom shooting two. 73% foul shooter. They've got a lot of guys who can handle too, don't they, Marquette? Yes. I mean, they can rearrange you, take advantage of a big guarding the perimeter guy. They are 27 out of 36 at the line, Bill. Mm, mm. And, and legit calls, mm. right? I would agree. Smith nicely done there, Van Triesen. Don't tell, huh? Knock it down, but yeah, the same story. Johnson on him again, wants to go to that rim. No, another tip, no. Justice bouncing here. Smith didn't take the long one. Knowles will. Three-pointer. Good job pushing it, attacking early. Their problem is they have not been doing enough because they're not rebounding on the defensive end. Good steal. Picked up by Knowles. Quick dish, Van Trees, and a timeout by Marquette. There is life in Louisville. Well, they have pulled to within 11. And plenty of time left, 4.54 on the clock. Whew. Game is so much emotion, isn't it? A lot of energy. The last couple of minutes gets Louisville a little more excited. Sets up the defense. Some terrific finishes. I love when guards drive baseline. They draw everybody into that lane. And here on the run out, take advantage. Get the puppies organized. Wow, bad back and all. And of course, the pressure then. Put the steam up. And we saw a dunk earlier by Van Trees. That one, the wise little delivery to make sure he can convert. That's seven points in 27 seconds by Louisville. Great spurt team. Look what Patino has done, no matter where he is coached. Now, all throughout the morning and into this afternoon, game starting at 11 a.m., Marquette has had an answer. Well, they're trying to get it in, finally does. Almost, huh? Well, this is a tough match now, they know. And Trees cannot contain Butler. 4.40 to go. Got to keep attacking, though, if you're Marquette. Keep the foot down. Ten to shoot. Problem right now. Just can't get it going when you want. Johnson Odom lost the handle on but tipped out by Louisville. See, I think you've got to keep playing. As you noted, so much time left. Two left on this particular sequence, shot clockwise. Catch, bounce, shoot. Corner jumper. Butler left open. Around and out. How's he get free? Mm. Louisville has grabbed momentum here. And this Louisville team, 28-8-0 spurts this year. That's all their game. Knowles catches, shoots. Got it! The three! It's as close as they have been in a long time, 65-57. It's a 10 nothing run. Bikes wide open. Takes it. Too strong. Louisville with the rebound. Here come the Cardinals. Oh, goodness. What was that? Good flow going and then turn it over. Got to value the ball, Jennings. Timeout, Marquette with 3.11 to go. And Louisville has cut into the lead, down by as much as 15. And they have pulled within eight. 
This is an interesting timeout for both coaches. Re-energized Louisville and a concerned Marquette. They're getting back in it, the quick thrust. They square up and deliver. And not too many people as quick as Knowles with that three-quarter turnaround jumper. And I think this timeout right here, it's important to say, let's keep going. Let's run our stuff. Don't wait till the end. Let's check out the Big East standings coming into play today. Of course, Syracuse perfect at 17-0. Pitt very close. Villanova, Cincinnati, all with one loss. And then you've got Marquette and Louisville right there in the middle of that first tier. And how about your partner at St. John's, huh? Of course, Syracuse took care of business in Manhattan, but uh, Steve's done a nice job with that team. Really has. Steve Lavin at 3-2 and two in the conference. He's right into the meat grinder part of the Big East schedule, just as Marquette is. But I guess who's not at any given moment in this conference? Now, this will be interesting to see what each team comes out with, what philosophy, what attack mode, uh, what are they going to present to the opponent? I think right here, Buzz is getting some organization of uh, offensive. Uh, he knows he's got the D covered. Let's keep active in pursuing the 10. Well, was just a couple of moments ago, it felt like Marquette had a secure lead. They were beginning to run some clock, but Louisville has gotten very active and energetic defensively and forced some turnovers. I think you remember the Kentucky game against LSU, the comeback that Rick Pitino's kids oh, made. Sure, sure. <laughs> They're never out of it with that guy on the sideline. And the way he gets kids to play. And Trees and Knowles have scored Louisville's last 12 points. They get into the set right away. Kadugan to drive. Up against Jennings. Smith with a rebound. I think that was going to be a ball screen on the wing, and he just took it himself. Butler was ready to come and screen. Got to bail him out. Smith penetrates. Airborne. Got it. Great attack. With the offhand as well. The blue line. A six-point game. This is the guy, good decision maker. A lot of guys would have made that pass and it would have been intercepted. Good control by Odom. Butler picked up the dribble. Crowd is behind them here in Louisville. Here's the ball. That's, I thought they were going to run earlier. Shot clock at four. Butler has to shoot it. A line driver. Marquette is suddenly falling apart offensively. Knowles with a long one. Wow. How about this team for spurts? 15 out. Wow. Yum yum. Alive. Bikes into the lane. The bouncer Crowder got it. That ended that 15 nothing run. Wow. What selection and strength at the rim. And a timeout, Rick Pitino, with a minute 33 to go, a five-point lead for Marquette. Oof, the alarm clock went off finally downtown. Terribly subdued crowd, lacking energy on the floor, all of a sudden alive and well. 67-62 in a game that really felt out of reach just about two and a half minutes ago. Unbelievable. And, and you know, the big thing I think for Marquette now is to get back into running their stuff. Don't be in a hurry. Don't force the issue. I think they should use Crowder, which they have on a ball screen, and let him slide on the mismatch. But they're in such a hurry now. He's begging for the ball. They've reversed it or forced the shot as Butler did on the last trip. A little bit panicked. I, I think very much so because you all of a sudden you're in a boat ride and things are really nice, you know, past the sauce. Give me a little of this, give me a little of that. And bang, they're right at you. Now the challenge shot, you're a little tighter. And I think it showed or exhibited itself with Marquette. Well, Louisville trying to cut all the way back into this lead, down by as many as 15 here in the second half. They have woken up this big house of almost 22,000, a sellout here at the KFC Yum Center. Louisville has hit seven of their last eight shots. Marquette has made just one of their last six. I think the big thing for Louisville now, can you come back with the same kind of emotion now? You know, sometimes a shot, it can dissipate too. And back out they come. 
Marquette trying to pick off their second top 25 opponent this week. They knocked out Notre Dame by making 12 out of 17 threes against the Fighting Irish. Well, by the way, Butler with the matchup on Knowles. Look for Knowles to drive. I think uh, they switch it back now. Butler on Van Trees. Knowles has been the hot hand in the comeback effort. Here he is to wow. catch and fire. Yeah! He can't miss right now. Two-point lead for Marquette. Some run. Bikes leans in, banks it for two. Big time delivery. Wow, with the left. Justice, the man in a hurry all the way through. Good rebounds. In traffic, fouled on the play with 49.8 left. I wonder if it was Crowder on the grab. That's what happens if the guards can get to the rim. All of a sudden, a little step over to block the shot. A good reaction. Terrence Jennings. Ooh, how about this three-quarter corkscrew? Nothing but nylon from deep. Bad back and all. Bad leg. Ooh, just incredible. Steve, thank you. A late wake-up call for the Cardinals. They were pretty listless until Knowles caught fire and they pulled it within four. Well, he, all of a sudden, he got loose. Uh, they started to attack a little bit, mix it up, find the open man, and Knowles stroke exceptional, and that energizes your defense. The man treats the beneficiary of a pretty good play, and I don't know how he got that free. Uh, Butler, no matter who's on him, Odom, and right here, he is turning in the air, not even squared, concentrating and nailing it from deep. Look at what he's done in the last four minutes and 22 seconds. 12 points, all on threes. Once they went to the two-minute offense, he <laughs> caught right. fire. And now the fans are saying, why don't we run the two-minute offense all game long? <laughs> Jennings makes the first. Terrence Jennings, a 63% foul shooter. This one's important in terms of what you want to run on that defensive end. How you gonna, he, once in a while, shadows the ball. You cannot inbound it when he runs out. He's the back guy now. Now the pressure. You really want Butler to handle it as much as possible. He's so calm. Knocked away, but they'll keep it. This is a 20 to 4 run over the last 453 for Louisville. They were looking to foul Kadugan on that last trip. And Justice does exactly that, stops the clock with 37.4 to go. So a 43% shooter. You think they look at the stats, these coaches? Just a little bit closely. <laughs> and they picked out the victim. Now, Rick was mad because they lost time. They tried to do it earlier, but didn't recognize. The sophomore junior, Kadugan, continues to scuffle at the line. Well, this is where all the white shirts have to squeeze and hold ground. Crowder very good, Butler very good at sneaking in there. Tough match for Smith with Crowder on the left. One of two. Marquette has shot a season high 39 foul shots. Oops, ooh, nearly. Yeah, push and go to the rim, that's the key. Don't just settle. Carrick, long one. Rebound tipped. What a, and a rebound. Foul on the deck. Yeah, with 24.4 to go. I had to grab it and fouled. Foul on Jimmy Butler of Marquette. So you settle for that three. If you don't get that rebound, you may have lost the game. Fortunately, Jennings very alert on that offensive rebound. Go to that rim. Get yourself organized. Get the deuce. Plenty of time. Now, Kadugan will come out. So he takes his worst foul shooter off the floor, Buzz Williams does, and brings on Joseph Fultz, who shoots them well. But it's Jennings here. A lot of iron, but it rolls in. A crawler.
70 68. What about that, huh? One point game. They press again. Bikes. Round the back. Don't to the need iron. it. Blocked. Don't need it. Jennings got his hand on it. 12 seconds left in a whistle as that one is a timeout by Louisville. 12.2 seconds to go. The Cardinals take a timeout. Trailing by one. Woo. What a finish. Dwight Bikes got to understand time, score. Gives this Louisville team a, a terrific opportunity. Wow. Beat it, bring it back out. If they foul you, so be it. And right here, just going all the way to the rim to the big fella. That's what Louisville does extremely well. Leads you to the promised land, and they got a swatter back there in Jennings. So there's our reset. Marquette has the possession arrow. Louisville is out of timeouts. Marquette has two remaining. And the way Preston Knowles is shooting it. You think it's going to get in his hands? It'll be interesting to see who they match. If, if Butler's the guy on Knowles, that would force him to go to the rim. And Jennings becomes very important on the offensive rebounding now if there's a miss. Smith trying to get it in. Here's Justice. Ten seconds left. Kurek. Here's Knowles. Knowles. Nice pass. What a give. Kurek lays it in. Four seconds left. Louisville by one. Timeout Marquette. Louisville surging into the lead. What a comeback. Mirrors. They've done it with mirrors. Basically. And here, looking for Knowles. It was Butler on him. And now they have to switch. And all of a sudden, the find is everybody stays outside and worried about the three-point line. Jurek, very alert, getting himself around that corner to the inside position, whether it's a catch and score or an offensive rebound. And what heart displayed by this team. Extraordinary. And now, conversely, Marquette, four seconds. I believe they have the one timeout left. I would try and get it to half court. Use the next one. And now you're going to get yourself in position to get a very good look. We'll see how they react to it. It's, uh, everybody back. Jennings back. They got a protector. Uh, Louisville is asleep for about 35 minutes today. Did they wake up in the nick of time? Cross screen. Butler at midcourt. Not going to call a timeout here. Gets off the shot. Left it short. And how about that? Louisville wins it. 71 to 70. What a remarkable come from behind win today. What a heartbreak. And what heart conversely. Extraordinary reaching back. As low as I've seen them in this, well, in this city. This building is my first experience, but never quitting. All of a sudden, a little tightness on one side, and the ability to spurt. This guy better get some sleep. I mean, that was an exhausting experience. A 24 to 5 run to end the game for Rick Patino and the Louisville Cardinals. The last two plays, remember the great pass by Preston Knowles to Keurig. The, the vision as well, thinking shot, and unfortunately at this end, uh, just coming up a little bit of a short. He can't control Butler here. He gets the blow by now, and this one, what a look he got, though. Uh. And a chance at the buzzer. It was short. And Louisville wins by one. Knowles was the man down the stretch and was just outstanding, scoring the bulk of his points inside the last four and a half minutes of play. Once again, your final score in the Big East today, Louisville 71 and Marquette 70.
Missouri and Texas A&M coming up. It's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now let's send it out to John Schombe.